Let's take a look at five enhancements in Creo Parametric 7.0. First off, in assembly mode, if you have any IFX fasteners, you're going to have commands for IFX in the mini toolbar. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I go to the Tools tab, here we have the Intelligent Fastener Extension. That's IFX. Let's throw some fasteners in here. I'm going to throw them using this cylindrical surface. Here is the screw head surface. This surface will be the nut surface. Then I'll click the OK button. I get a warning that I already have some fasteners on this reference. I'm going to continue. And here I'm just using a hex head screw, getting a couple of washers in here and a screw nut. I will click the OK button. I'm just going to do one instance and not assemble them on all the different pattern instances. And so here you see the new group of features that I got in the model tree. Now, if I click on one of those fasteners in the mini toolbar, I've got three additional commands. This allows me to reassemble that on an existing reference. Here we have the ability to redefine the fastener and also the ability to delete the fastener. Second enhancement, and this is going to be a big one. Now the default for accuracy is absolute instead of relative. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I go to the model properties dialog box, which I have in my quick access toolbar, here we have the default accuracy as it was in Creo Parametric 6.0 and earlier. It was relative using a value of 0 0.0012, and you could change that to absolute or change the amount that you're using for the relative accuracy. I'm going to cancel out of here and create a new part. I'll just hit the File New button. Here we have Part in here. I'm not going to use my default template. I already have a default template. So rather than using one of my templates, I'm going to choose Empty from over here and then click the OK button. And in this particular model, now if I go to my Model Properties dialog box, here you can see that the default absolute accuracy is 0 0.00039. Let me hit the change button in here. And so again, that's absolute accuracy based on your set of units. If you are using a metric model instead of one with imperial units, then the default accuracy is going to be 0 0.01 millimeters. So again, that is a big change. Also, if I go to create another brand new part, let me uncheck the option to use the default template. You have a number of templates that PTC provides for you. I'm going to navigate to them on my computer. Let me go to my C drive, Program Files, PTC, Creo 7.0. I have a lot of versions of Creo on my computer. And then Common Files and Templates. For those of you who are familiar with the templates that were in here before, there are a bunch more now. Again, these are all the templates that are available for part files. And you'll notice with them that the new naming scheme has underscore ABS or underscore rel after the names. And so you have these other different templates based on whether you want to use absolute accuracy or relative accuracy. Looks like there's some other different templates over here for Creo Direct, and they've got different uh, numbers of decimal places in here uh, for whatever that they are using. But again, absolute accuracy is the new default in Creo Parametric, and you have more model templates to choose from when starting off new parts and assemblies. All right, let's cancel out of here. Next enhancement to take a look at also deals with model properties. And just to show you, in case you haven't customized your interface like I've done, if you go to File Prepare, here's the Model Properties command. Because I am in there so often, I've added it to my Quick Access Toolbar. But here in the Model Properties, there are two new choices underneath Detailing, Tolerance Standard, and tolerance standard version. So for example, here it is set to ANSI Y 14.5 2018. Now even though it's 2020, there are a lot of companies that have not upgraded to the most recent standard, which actually came out in January of 2019. A lot of companies are still on the 2009 standard, 
And there are actually some big differences between the 2009 standard and the 2018 standard. For example, if you are using the GD&T checker in the 2018 standard, two of your characteristics went away. Let me close out of here and I'll just go to the annotate tab. Uh, I don't really have any geometry in here, but when you're creating a ge geometric tolerance, actually, let me jump over to the other model that has some geometry in here. Let me go to this one over here and then annotate. If I go to my geometric tolerance, and just create one in here on this surface and then middle mouse button to locate it. Here underneath geometric characteristic, two of the ones that went away in the 2018 standard was concentricity and symmetry. So if you're trying to adhere to the 2018 standard, you wouldn't want to have those different ones in there. So that's why you have the ability to specify what your tolerance standard is in the model properties dialog box. So again, you have both your tolerance standard and the tolerance standard version. If I click the change button over here, hey, you've got a drop down list to choose which of the two that you want to use. And then I can say, yep, I'm still on 2009, so I will set that value there. Okay, next enhancement to take a look at, number four, model check. There are a couple new checks in model check to support multi-body modeling. If I go to file options, and then, where is it under here, environment. Here we have our model check settings. Let's make this dialog box a little bit bigger. Let's go into our check files and I'm gonna hit the button to create a new file. We have a bunch of different groups of options in here. I'm gonna collapse them to go through here a little quicker. Let's see, I'm looking for, uh, let me just scroll down. If I go down to information, here's one for body information. So you can get reported in your model check reports, the number of bodies. Also, if I scroll down to the miscellaneous group, here we have checks that you can configure to report if your model has multi-bodies. So again, two new checks available in model check. And the last enhancement to take a look at in this video also deals with multi-body, specifically on data exchange. If I go to file options and then data exchange, you can set up your import profiles to allow multi-bodies. Let me go to the drop-down list. Let's say I'm setting up a new step file. I will set up import and open profiles. If I go to the topology tab, there's this new option in here that allows you to import multiple bodies into one part. Again, Creo 6.0 and earlier didn't support multi-body, so you didn't have the ability to have multiple bodies in one part. But now again, you can set that up in your different import profiles. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.